right, hey, how's it going? This is uh, the Helix Real Reviews. Um, not sure what episode this is, but I am here with a good friend of mine, Jason Baskey. Jason, hey. say hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, Jason, why don't you give a little background on yourself? What? Uh, why are you interested in films and film reviews? Uh, I guess I watch a lot, and but not like not just not just watch them. When you're kind of like when you're a movie guy, you kind of more than watch them. You just you can't watch a movie anymore without going over everything with a fine tooth comb. So I figured this would be a good outlet to get out my rage slash joy when I watch something. Some serious nerd rage. You got to get that out. <laughs> nerd rage or nerd boners, depending on <laughs> depending on the film. Yes. Perfect. There's your segue to Spring Breakers. Nerd boners. That's true. Or That's just true. Boners in general. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, you have the same feelings I do. You try and. You feel that film critics are these shitty, shitty people, but then you sit back at every single movie you watch and you dissect it with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, they're they're really only one or two levels above paparazzi on the in the the Hollywood scale of worthfulness of life. <laughs> but I definitely you that know that was well put. Yeah, <laughs> speaking, I'm definitely uh, an armchair critic, I guess. So mm-hmm. yeah, this will be a good outlet so I can stop screaming at my dog about movies <laughs> since he's the only one that's listening anymore right <laughs> yeah everyone else is too new yeah fair enough um okay so actually jason segued well into my first review uh i haven't done a couple all right let's be honest i've only done two reviews so far so this will be number three and this week we're going to be talking about it was the newly released uh harmony corinne's spring breakers Good morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Shine, little bit. Where's the money? Money, money. What? You know what? All I know is I'm not going to sit here another day. Spring break. How are we going to get enough money? I don't know. We're the only ones still here. Spring break. I'm tired of seeing the same thing. Spring break. It's your chance to see something different. Spring break. Just get that cash. Pretend like it's a video game. We can do this. Spring break. What a magic place, y'all! You can change who you are, y'all. Bikinis and big booties, y'all. That's what life is about. Who are you? My name's Aileen. Why are you here? I saw y'all in there. They like nice people. Come on, y'all. Why acting suspicious? <laughs> I knew y'all was special from the moment I saw you. It's written on your faces. Because I just have a really, really bad feeling about this. Let's cause some trouble now. Break, break, bitches! I got my dark tan and oil. Lay out by the pool. This is the American dream, y'all. Spring break. Y'all want to die tonight? Spring break. Get down! You're scared, aren't you? Spring break forever. Spring break forever, bitches. My loneliness oh. is killing me. And now we're back after the trailer. Uh, so that was a great trailer, right? That is a sweet trailer. Wasn't actually. it? I'm surprised it took Hollywood so long to jump on the dubstep, bro step, Skrillex train. But it actually worked really well in that trailer. That's not the first time that song's been used, though, in a trailer. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it used in The Watch? The Watch. No, there, that was a different Skrillex song. Yeah, but this was like... Oh, right. This okay. Scary Monsters was like his first big song ever. That's and right, yeah. I was yeah. wondering why nobody would use it in a trailer up until this one. It's very trailer-esque. Yeah. Yes, good point. Um, okay, so... Why did Michael Bay not use that song in Transformers? It sounds like... Why don't you write him a letter? Like, why don't you get on your computer and email him right now? It sounds like robots having dirty sex, so <laughs> you think that would fit perfectly with Transformers, but I, I digress, as I will. <laughs> Several times. Yes. Um, okay, so as uh, 
as we start get going, the problem is that Jason has not seen Spring Breaker, so I'm going to have to actually give a spoiler-free review, and it's pretty much just going to be me talking and Jason responding to what I have to say about this movie, and his thoughts only derive from the trailer. Correct. That's the only thing he has to go on. So, um, yeah, I'll start off uh, what I thought of the whole movie. I'll start off with a review that's not actually mine, but uh, the person I went with, my girlfriend, she went and saw this movie, and she didn't really, you know, some she usually trusts my choice of movies when we go out, especially if it's stuff that's not really, she doesn't know a lot of what's going on um, beforehand, like going in, she hasn't heard much about it, and... She assumed that if Selena Gomez is in it, it's probably a safe bet that it's, you know, it's not going to be too edgy or too... She, did, she didn't question what you wanted to see a Selena Gomez movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it had James Franco. That was the I whole guess, That yeah. was the whole sell. I would never see a Selena Gomez movie just on that alone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she... So basically, she went and she hated the movie so much. She's never done this before, but I could check out... She was like munching popcorn very loudly. <laughs> Like 30 minutes in the movie, um, because the movie's the first 30 minutes of that movie is so boobtastic and off the wall titties that, um, if you're not in it, you're not like you're off, like it turns you off for the rest of the movie. And I don't blame anybody for being turned off, like it's very gratuitous, uh, you know. It's been a debate whether or not he's doing this on purpose, you know, trying to exploit. The whole spring break teen thing, whatever, or if he's embracing it, like you don't know if he's exploiting it or making a, a comment on it. Um, and I've read a lot of reviews, and I feel that's how most people seem to feel about this movie. You're not really sure what he's trying to say with it. Um, I feel if it's Harmony Corrine, he usually is. Em- he's probably embracing it because he's disgusted by it. You think so? He, yeah, I think he. I think he fi- think just thinks the whole culture is ridiculous, but he's such like that devil's advocate filmmaker kind of guy that I swear he just, he was trying to make you uncomfortable sometimes that since he found it disgusting, he thought, Hey, this is a perfect subject to make movies about. All right. Well, let's, uh, okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll finish what, how Liz felt about it. Basically she was off. Uh, and she pretty much, I've never been in a movie where she was just off. Like just, I was, you know, it was painful to sit next to her. While, like, titties are bouncing up and down in slow motion and all that. As artfully as it was done, it's still titties at the end of the day. So she gets um, probably about, I would say, past the second act, and then she's zonked out. She fell asleep. She's never fallen asleep uh, in a movie theater before, so. Um, And we were talking about even doing a podcast together, and she was just like, nah. (laughs) I was like, yeah, well, you fell asleep during it anyway, so you're out. (laughs) But, uh. So anyway, that that'll take. I'll give one review. I'll I'll sum up how I feel about the movie. I didn't hate it, but I can definitely understand why people hate people do. Um, and it stuck with me. It's been, I think I saw it on Saturday or Friday, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. It's not necessarily because the movie is good. It's just it transcends how you feel. Like it's one of those movies that you just watch and you feel because it's not. You know, linear story. Girl, uh, you know, girl is bored in real life. Wants to go on spring break. Does this to go on spring break. Goes to spring break. Gets arrested. Meets this guy. Then all that shit happens. Well, I think that's how it was marketed at first. And that, yeah. I, I even thought it was going to be like that. Like, what was that terrible movie with the big head chick from American Beauty? Remember they were like five cheerleaders and they decided to rob a grocery store or something? Oh, is that Gobstop? No. No, that was Jawbreaker. With Jawbreaker, yeah, yeah, That was yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. that, too. But there was a terrible movie. Oh, I think I know what you're talking Mena about. Mena Suvari. Yeah. And they all wore, like, happy doll masks and decided to rob a grocery store. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I think they tried to market it like that. Yeah. Like, you know, like Bottle Rocket or any of those kind of movies where Average Joes or Jills. To, Just you know, like fun, a dark comedy yeah, or fun something. Fun with Dick and Jane. Like, there's so many terrible movies like that. Yeah. I thought they tried to market it like that at first, but I think maybe they realized it was cooler to market it as a... Is a pulp kind of... Yeah, it was not that. It was, yeah. for sure, it was definitely wasn't one of these, hey, we're just going, we're having fun. Yeah. It was... Um, and Harmony does this in all of his work, obviously. Kids, I don't know uh, how you grew up on that, but I remember when kids came out, I was that age, 
and I knew kids like that. And that movie, like, cut right to the core of, like, who I was. I don't know, just, that was the most realistic movie I've ever seen. I've never seen any movie come even close to trying to, um, you know, show what kids are like. So, ever since that point, I've been a fan. I know he's done some weird stuff here and there. Gummo, I've never seen that. Um, this is probably the only other piece of work yeah. I saw of his. And, um, I mean, like I said, the way it was edited and put together, it was, and I said this to you earlier, imagine Scarface, Girls Gone Wild, and Tree of Life all had a baby, and it would come out looking like this. Um, the editing style is so non-conventional. It's just... It's very montage -y. There's a lot of... You ever seen The New World? No. Terrence Malick with uh, Colin Farrell? Honestly, I try to avoid Terrence Malick movies <laughs> yeah. at all costs. Well, this is... But that's... This is almost a Terrence Malick movie. I'm not even lying. So, Scarface and Girls Gone Wild and Tree of Life is what it's like. Blood spattered titties that get held on the shot for way too long or like edited in a way that makes me... Fidgety or something? Like no, no. Every it's... Terrence Malick movie, I'm like, the only movie I liked is that I was close to liking was uh, Thin Red Line. And yeah. it probably could have been an hour shorter. But Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, actually, maybe more Thin Red Line than uh, thinking about it. But it has, you know that style where people are whispering, like, monologues to seemingly nobody, and there's just these mm -hmm. montages of people. There was stuff like that happening with that same amount of... Uh, Panache, like the same amount of passion that those characters would have about, you know, life or the war, World War II or whatever. Mm. And but they were talking that way about spring break. And it would just be these weird monologues that Selena Gomez would give or uh Vanessa Hudgens over like weird montages of these like hypnotic images. Um Yeah, and people and there would just be these monologues and you're like, is this like, is he making fun of it, or does he love Spring Break that much? Like, I'm not yeah. sure what's going on here. Because um, the cinematography was phenomenal, too. You know, it's like one of the last movies I've seen in a while that was still on film. Hmm. You know what I mean? He actually yeah. shot it on film, and nowadays, like, it definitely didn't need to be, but I thought it was great. Um, yeah, so... Uh, the way it was put together, I could definitely see it being put, uh, putting off a lot of people. And it was very montage -y, And it had also probably one of the best soundtracks I think I've heard in years. And it had, like, I know you're a fan of this type of music. It had very trance music and, like, slow style. Like, very similar to, um, what's the Facebook movie? Uh, no, like Social Network. Like, yeah, like the yeah. soundtrack to that, you know, is incredible. You're a big Trent Reznor fan, right? Yeah. And uh, it had some elements of that. And then there's a lot of Skrillex songs in it. Yeah. And Yeah, I actually got the soundtrack. I haven't seen the movie, but the, the soundtrack is... Skrillex even does like the tramp, the, the ambient kind of stuff yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He pretty much does the whole thing except for... Mm -hmm. I think there's a Gucci Mane song on there or something. But Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there is also... I don't want to spoil the movie, but this is probably the centerpiece of the whole film. There's a sequence that's so confusing, but so amazing at the same time. Uh, the girls just seem to sing. They sing Britney Spears randomly in one scene, and they're all dancing and singing it. Uh, Non-linear, too. It, they would be like in a parking lot. Then it would just randomly cut to them sitting down beside the convenience store, and then them back sing like still singing it in both scenes but it was at different times and then uh i think like halfway through the movie uh they meet james franco and his character and then james franco starts playing i think it's every time by britney spears you know the you know the one in the music video where she drowns herself or it Mesquito. looks like she's about to kill herself. Mosquito Rich, yes. Yeah, it's got, no, no, it's uh, Deacon Frost, the guy Stephen Dorf. Oh, Dorf. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was a poor man's Johnny Depp. <laughs> I didn't know which one. That was probably the last acting job he's had. I too. think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's this sequence where they James Franco starts playing this on the piano beside the water, beside the ocean, and the three girls have like guns and they're in ski pink ski masks 
And he starts playing this on the piano and singing it. And the girls sing along. And then it kind of fades into Britney Spears singing it. And then it's this sequence of them robbing uh, tourists and beating the shit out of them in super slow motion too. Not just 60 frames, but the, yeah. but the next one after that. And it's this beautiful cinematography to this bizarre music of people getting their face like nice. punched in and robbed and shit. And all the girls like, I don't know if they kill any people in that sequence. They might. I can't remember. I don't think that they do. But yeah, I just remember laughing and being horrified at the exact same <laughs> time. And I was like, I can't believe. Like, I'll never listen to that song the same way again. Nice. And uh, it's probably up there with like uh, what Quentin Tarantino... Yeah, it's a, it uh, sounds like the that. one with the ear cut off song, yeah. stuck in the middle with you. You can't yeah. you can't hear that song and not think of Michael Madsen yeah. ripping off that cop's ear. See, that's what I was kind of hoping the movie would be would be less fun with Dick and Jane or terrible movies like that, and more yeah. Clockwork Orange with sexy girls. Yeah, where it's like it's it. I find it's it's more disturbing when it's just violence for the sake of violence, and you don't know why they're even like that. Like it's yeah. not. Oh, we live in a natural small, born killers. Yeah, like we live in a small town and we're you know, we're bored with small town. Like it's more just like this looks awesome to do. Let's do it. And <laughs> I feel that you know, let's do it while listening to Britney Spears. I find that's like way more disturbing and that's probably gonna turn a lot of people off. Like yeah. Clockwork Orange, probably one out of five people you'll meet will actually enjoy that movie. No, it's true. And you know, I d I don't blame them for feeling that way. I feel like uh yeah, like it's kind of weird because by the Britney Spears point, if you're off the movie, that's not going to it's you're going to see that and just be like this is stupid. Yeah. But if you're still with it, like if you're still along for the ride, then yeah, like you'll have the reaction I had, but obviously Liz had the this is stupid yeah. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I don't blame I don't blame people for being turned off by like the first I would say the first act cuz first act is wall to wall boobs, like more gratuitous than I think <laughs> has been in m- movies in a long time and it's just and it's like close-ups it's like just literally like close-up slow-mo of a girl dancing with her boobs going about and uh yeah it walks the line of exploitation and artistic merit or whatever however you want to say it um but yeah and then so i'll talk a little bit about james franco too james franco is probably the best thing that happened to this movie and i i was listening to an interview and he was the first one to be casted which probably explains how they were uh you know this creepy dude was able to get uh all these disney channel yeah. sweethearts um yeah. i was the great and powerful is going to be in my movie oh cool <laughs> uh. that's probably why mila kunis and her, that chick did i was great and powerful yeah. anyway um, but yeah so he's definitely when he shows up in the movie and he did exactly what I knew he was going to do. Because when we, you would see him in the trailer, you're just like, what the fuck is James Franco thinking? Like, how the how the hell did he possibly sign on to this? And why does he look like, you know, the ugliest white rapper ever and <laughs> blah, blah, Like, I was thinking, I was hoping by the trailers that he was he's going to play it way over to, over the top and be like a caricature of Kevin Federline. And- yeah. Which might be ironic that he was playing Britney Spears and maybe No no, they definitely they definitely allude to that, like that he's, you know, kind of like you said, a character a caricature of those archetypes. Yeah. But at the same time, and this is what I knew he would do, he deli- he gives it something more, especially as the movie goes on, he kinda of delve into what he's about. Um, he makes him just not a two dimensional character. You start you understand kind of who he's about and what he is and um and because of that there's a it makes the ending a little shocking the ending's weird because there's you feel like there's no character development like i think another reason people don't like this movie is that the story just isn't that that great Mm -hmm. like it's okay um you know it's serviceable and from what I've heard of interviews that Harmony Corinne has done, he didn't really, he had like a script and a script idea. And it was pretty much just the element that started with him was uh, St. Petersburg girls in pink ski masks robbing people in bikinis. And that's pretty, that is an iconic image that you come away with from the movie if you've seen it. 
and that kind of sticks with you. But ultimately, you know, it's one of those movies that doesn't really add up to as much as you would hope. Yeah. But it is overall, it is an experience, and uh, you know, if you're if you're willing to put up with the non-linear storytelling, you know, like they'll jump ahead and then jump back, and they'll have, like I said, they'll have these montages that kind of come out of nowhere. And they'll have these like bizarre monologues, the whispering monologues, very mm. Terrence Malick like. Um, but you know, and then they'll have some cool scenes and some violent scenes, and it's one of those movies you watch. And I imagine, especially if you're an adult, you watch and you weep for the children coming <laughs> up, and pray that you never have a daughter. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, pray that your daughter didn't even end up in this movie. God damn. <laughs> like there was some. There's some crazy shit going on in there. Nice. But uh, I'll also give credit to definitely uh, well, what the hell? Uh, Vanessa Hudgens. Uh, we've always known that she was a little bit of a crazy person. Mm-hmm. And oh, we've always hoped so. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were there were those photos, right? I, have, of... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never googled those multiple times. <laughs> well, yes, there's those photos and. It's funny, she kind of embraces that side of her in this movie full heartily. So, you know, I give her credit. Like, I give her credit for having the balls to kind of, like, go full out. I'm not even saying she was that amazing, but, you know, she you can tell she was trying to shed that shell. Um, Selena Gomez was well casted in this for the character that she played, and she had kind of a compelling arc to her story. She was actually the one that wasn't as in it as like she was the religious one and she was kind of, you know, she was the eyes of the audience, you know, she was the one that was kind of coming with these girls and entering this world and being like, what the fuck am I doing here in this situation? Like, why am I in jail? Why is this happening? Why are we hanging out with this crazy ass James Franco looking dude? And, um, yeah, so she was kind of a good cast for that. And, uh, ultimately I feel I feel she went a little underused. I obviously can't give away what happens to her, but um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything more. To, do you have any questions or any comments? No, I, I yeah, I definitely want to see it. I don't know if I'll pay to see it in the theater, but yeah, it definitely looks. Even if it is like more style over substance, I'm I'm all for that. It's if definitely it's, yeah. If it's done the right way, like like my favorite director is Robert Rodriguez, and I'd say. 80% of his movies are more style than substance. Like oh, his, yeah. Yes, yeah. the odd snappy line and stuff, but his scripts are pretty bare yeah. bones. Like the whole El Mariachi Desperado series, are they're not good scripts. Like they're not great stories. Yeah. But he, he's like invented so many awesome ways to turn guitars and guitar cases into weapons. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like awesome shit like that. And like Sin City is not the craziest, you know, story. Like it's not amazing or anything. It's yeah. pretty decent, but it's a style over substance again so yeah i'm all for that and and, and boobs <laughs> well there's there's plenty of boob <laughs> I think plenty of boob in this i think you should re-edit the trailers for these and then put your own your own sound bites like when he said like like booberific whatever <laughs> like you should put your those as the sound bites over whoever the actual <laughs> ones are so after you review a movie it should be spring breakers with Skrillex playing and then like Michael Ant, booberific. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> booberific wall to wall titties. <laughs> no, no, I'll have that page with like the unfocused footage behind it and then just all those sound, yeah. uh, all those quotes coming up. But every quote says, dash Michael Ant. He, yeah. he looks real reviews. Like, party. St. Lena Gomez totally parties with this James Franco looking motherfucker. <laughs> Michael Ant. No, that's a Jason Baskey. That's <laughs> going on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, I, you just watch. I'll, I'll fucking do that. You just watch. Um, yeah, so, all right. Well, that's all I have to feel. Uh, ultimately, what will I say? Check it out if you have an open mind. It's not what you expect it will be. Um, you know, it's definitely an interesting movie-going experience, but it looks amazing. The soundtrack is probably one of the best in several years. And, you know, James Franco being... A gangster is almost worth the price of admission alone. So, I would put it on par with Heath Ledger's The Joker. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Just settle down. Not even close. Not even close. But he he does save the movie when he shows yeah. up. You're like, all right, 
this is starting to finally go somewhere. Because the girls, the, actually, I will say this. The girls can't carry the movie. No. I don't know if it, it might not be their fault. It might just be the script and the way it's put together. But not a lot of character development, maybe outside of like Selena Gomez's character. Not a lot of character development happens pretty much up until James Franco shows up. And then we kind of figure out who and what these girls are about. But even so. But anyway. Check it out. Don't take your girlfriend. She won't enjoy it. Uh, I'll just warn you right out the bat on that. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, feel so, free. In summation, it is a lot more than just boobs, but it's also just boobs. But it's also very much <laughs> but it's also, boobs. also boobs. Probably the most gratuitous movie boobs in several, several years. So, like, there's a sequence in the beginning. It, it reminds me, like, Jason and I used to, uh, well, I still do, but he, he does his own thing. But... We used to shoot party videos of girls in slow motion dancing and all that. And we would edit it together, you know, show people having a good time. There's a sequence like that in the very beginning of the film. And it kind of keeps coming back up throughout the film. It's almost like a, almost like a, like a bookend for scenes. Hmm. You know what I mean? When they cut to something just to kind of remind you that what's going on to remind you of the atmosphere. And it's literally just probably about 30 kids on a beach like chugging beers uh in a funnel all in slow motion and there's girls without their shirts on like jumping around there's guys pouring beer on them and like doing all these games on the beach and uh it's very artfully done but at the same time you're just like god damn that's a lot of dicks <laughs> <laughs> but uh anyway so i'm gonna end it on that note and uh that's that so check it out if you feel like it but don't bring your girlfriend because she won't like it all right take care